Uh, hello, everyone. Hope you are having an awesome day wherever you are. Uh, I am Amin Fatemi. I'm the managing editor of engineering for the SN Applied Sciences Journal. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this session of SNAS webinar series. We have actually been doing the webinar series since a couple of months ago, and that has proved to be a successful uh, endeavor for us. Uh, we host webinars for our authors, uh, guest editors, and editorial board members, like our kind of speaker today, where they can share their research topic of interest uh, for the audience. And that has proven to be a successful uh, a uh, successful thing as uh, we get to hear the state of the art about their current research topics. Today, we have Dr. Omar Lopez. Uh, he was very kind to accept our invitation for the webinar despite his very busy schedule. Not long ago, he was in Mexico doing conference and webinars and whatnot. And now uh, we had to reschedule as well. So eventually we ended up on this date and time. So thank you, Omar, for uh, accepting our invitation and joining the session today. Uh, Dr. Omar is one of our editorial board members. A few words about him. He is an associate professor of the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Universitat de Los, An Los Andes in Bogota, Colombia. He got his PhD degree in mechanical engineering at the University of Texas in Austin in 2009. His research interests are focused on the application of computational fluid dynamics to the solution of complex external and highly unsteady flows, including flow control based in synthetic jets. Uh, I will read out the webinar title, a numerical simulation of vertical axis turbines for hydrokinetic applications. As we know in today's, uh, growing demand for energy, sustainable energy, renewable energy has a, a very uh, important spot to replace the non-sustainable energy resources uh, as much as we can. So it will be very interesting to hear about the new advances and the state of the art in the world of uh, turbines uh, from uh, one of the researchers in this area uh, in Dr. Omar. So uh, I will stop sharing now and uh, give it to uh, Dr. Omar, but please mute yourself during the whole session. Close your video if it's not already automatically closed. And if you have any questions, please type it in the chat box and I will read it out loud when we have the time for the Q&A. So without any uh, further ado, uh, Dr. Omar, please take it from here. Uh, you can share your screen now. And you have to unmute yourself as well. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, Amin, for the presentation. And also, thanks for the opportunity. I see Natalie that is in the audience. And uh, I mean, the opportunity of being an, an editor for, for Springer. Um, and I hope that this, this presentation uh, brings a lot of discussion into uh, uh, in this topic that you mentioned, I mean, about the renewable energies, which is very important for the next decades for in general, for, for, for in order to, to, to mitigate the, the problems that we have with the environments and other and the climate change. Okay, so let me get started with the presentation. As Amin mentioned, uh, so uh, the topic of my talk is related to the numerical simulation of vertical axis turbines uh, for hydrokinetic applications. Um, uh, this is an outline of the presentation. Initially, I'm going to talk about the Sorry, I have, uh, I have a. Uh, initially, I will talk about the Colombian energy context. Then I will introduce the vertical axis turbines, the, the general elements of these devices. Also, uh, I will talk about the complex flow phenomena involved in the 
simulation of these kind of turbines. Then I will show you the objective of the research work that we've been doing here in Colombia related with this topic. And from that, I will discuss two specific cases in order to improve the efficiency of these devices. One is uh, using a passive, a passive element for improve this efficiency uh, using a diffuser. And the other one is uh, using active devices based on synthetic jets, which is part of the research work that I've been working on since my PhD. I will end the presentation with conclusions and acknowledgement and references. Okay, so let me get started, uh, but by giving a general context of the, uh, the uh, how is the, uh, the energy generation in Colombia, which is one of the main <coughs> uh, elements that uh, took me into this research area. So the first thing that we have to know is that most of the electrical energy in Colombia is generated uh, from hydraulic resources. Uh, the, uh, this corresponds to approximately 60% of the available electrical energy in, in, in the Colombian territory. This is very high and has been historically it has been very uh, important for Colombia that, that we have this high amount of uh, generation of electricity from uh, 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 environmentally friendly source. Nevertheless, in, in the mid uh, 90s, uh, this problem of the climate change and especially the Nino uh, brought another element into this problem because we have several drought uh, during drought season so that the uh, dams uh, suffer a lot from these very uh, dry seasons. And actually in 1992, Colombia had a, a very difficult situation in energy generation and there were many problems. So from that point, uh, the Colombian government started uh, building, of course, thermal uh, units in different regions in Colombia. But of course, this, this is related to the environmental problem. So nowadays, uh, the, there is a big ne a, a necessity to increase uh, the, the generation of electric and energy from other renewable resources different from hydropower. Right now, uh, this, uh, the contribution of these other renewable uh, sources is less than 1% in, in the Colombian energy context. Uh, th this is kind of contradictory because, of course, we have a lot of possibilities to re to replace uh, to replace the, the the energy that we are generating with thermal with thermal sources uh, such as solar energy, wind, biomass, and one of them is, of course, the hydrokinetic, which is the one the energy contains in in rivers, and of course we have a, a availability in tidal and marine currents. So regarding the hydro hydrokinetic energy possibilities, there is a high potential because uh, uh, the flow, uh, the average flow during the year in several rivers that we have in Colombia is very high, as you can see here uh, in these numbers that can range from uh, 3,000, and miracles per second up to 30,000 miracles per second. So we have a, a very high potential for hydrokinetic application. And as we are going to see this uh, as a difference with hydropower, you don't require to build a dam in order to extract that energy available in those rivers. Uh, another problem in the Colombian energy context is that uh, a significant part of the Colombian territory is not connected to the main electrical grid. As we can see here in this map, the, 
the white region is the, as you can see, the center and the north part of Colombia is the one that is connected to the grid. But we see a lot of regions in yellow and green which are not connected to the to the grid. So they have to generate their energy mostly based on diesel engines. And this, of course, is, is contradictory. It's contradictory because these rivers are actually in these regions. So, so it doesn't make any sense to, you know, take a, a diesel from Bogota or other places and uh, have to move that diesel into this region in order to generate electricity. Uh, and of, another problem is that uh, uh, the community that lives in these in these not connected areas, they have a big problem in the satisfaction of their basic needs. So that a small generation or micro generation could be a, a big possibility in order to satisfy those basic needs for those communities. Uh, so that's when it comes into play the vertical axis turbines. We know that in recent years, these turbines have shown a very high potential for wind energy application, especially in urban, uh, urban environments. And offshore, uh, there are different types of vertical axis turbines, as we can see here. Uh, we have the, the Darius turbine uh, with a straight bladed or curve or, or helicoidal blades. And we also have the Savonius. Uh, the Savonius is not in this, in this slide. And actually the presentation is gonna be focused on the Darius turbines with a straight blades, which is this picture that we see here. So typically this dev device is, has three blades as we can see here. The blade has a, uh, is, is like a, uh, is similar to a wing in a, in 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 a, in, a, in an aircraft, and when this uh, device with th these three blades is exposed to the wind, it, it rotates so that it has some advantages, as you can see here, in comparison with horizontal uh, axis turbines, which are the most typically used in in wind energy. Uh, the cost, not only in the manufacturing, but also in the in the maintenance is, is low. Uh, these devices do not require yaw mechanism. So the rotation is independent of the direction of the of the current, uh, of course, in this uh, for wind in, the, in the, the direction of the wind or the uh, river current. Uh, it generates very low noise in comparison to 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 uh, horizontal axis turbine, and the operation is very stable. But at the same time, they have uh, several disadvantages, and one of them that we are going to focus our presentation today is their low efficiency. Uh, these devices also have a problem with self-starting difficulties, so a very low range loss number. Uh, you need. Uh, a mechanism in order to start the rotation. But uh, in to, uh, for today's talk, we are going to focus in how to improve this low efficiency of these devices in comparison to horizontal axis turbines. Of course, uh, the application of these devices is starting with, with energy, but in, the, in recent years, they have been extended to marine, tidal, and also hydrokinetic energies. And this is the case that we're going to, to discuss today. One of the problems, or there are several problems in the simulation of this, or in the analysis in general to study and design these this, this devices. As we can see here, uh, as, the, as the blades rotate, the, the, there is a high variation in the angle of attack. We can see here, with respect to the tip speed ratio, the angle of attack can vary uh, between minus 30 to 30 degrees in just in one rotation. Okay. Uh, another, another problem that we have is that for hydrokinetic application, typically we use a small scale uh, vertical axis turbine so that the tip speed ratio 
is, is low in comparison to, to wind energy applications. And of course, independent of the application, if uh, either wind or hydrokin hydrokinetic, as you can see here, as the angle of attack changes so rapidly, uh, the dynamic stall phenomena is always present. Actually, this phenomena is the one that is related to the low efficiency, so that the problem is, is actually unavoidable, but maybe is controllable. And that's part of the discussion that we, that we, we are going to do today. Uh, regarding the, the flow dynamics, there are several issues that, that need to be addressed in the, in, the, in, the, in the study and analysis and design of these, of these devices, such as uh, laminar boundary regions, including separation and retachment, transition in this boundary, boundary layer, of course, transition to turbulent, including separation of this boundary layer, uh, leading edge separation, and also a lot of interaction of that, uh, those vortices that uh, are detached from the blades, not only interaction between the, the wakes of, the, of each blade, but also if we have uh, a tower that is not included in this model, but typically we have a tower in the middle, there is also interaction with that tower. So, so there are several, several elements that uh, need to be addressed in, uh, in order to, to perform simulations of these devices and also not only for simulation, but also for analysis, study and design of these devices. So in this context that I just explained, uh, the work that we've been doing at Universidad de los Andes uh, have been focused in these objectives. The first one is the use of numerical techniques based on, based on CFD in order to understand the dynamics of the flow around these devices. Of course, since the, as I explained before, since the, the efficiency is low, then explore the possibilities of applying uh, flow control techniques in order to improve this efficiency. And the first step is to test these ideas of uh, efficiency improvement using 2D simulations, and then uh, bring these ideas in, in more realistic situations using 3D simulations, with, which are more, more challenging, as I will show later. Uh, so uh, for this, I'm going to focus my discussion in these two cases. Case one is using a diffuser in order uh, to, implement, to implement to these simulations using a diffuser in order to increase uh, the efficiency of the vertical axis turbines. And the second one is using synthetic jets. And I will give some details later about what is a synthetic jet and how can this be used in the, in the improvement of the efficiency of these devices. Okay, so the first case, the idea is to, as we can see in this picture on the, on the right, is to uh, insert the turbine, as we can see here, the turbine, this is, these are the three blades. So we need to insert this turbine into these two diffusers. Of course, the, the, the design of this diffuser should be, uh, of course, with a, a hydro, hydro profile in order to avoid separation uh, on these regions, as we can see in this, in this picture. So this, this diffuser is used in order to energize the region of the, the fluid that is entering in, in the turbine in order to uh, increase this efficiency. This idea has been implemented in, in, a, in a turbine that was designed by a German, German company. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a startup from TU Darmstadt that is called E-Ray. We have working with them in the last couple of years in order to install these units. These are floating units that are installed in rivers. Uh, and the energy used for this is typically used for 
for uh, for what, what is called water management. So the idea is to have some uh, sensors that can measure uh, uh, ri the river level, the velocity, the <coughs> main and instantaneous velocity, temperature, preci precipitation, etc. Uh, th this kind of information is useful, as I mentioned before, for management of water management of rivers, and also to uh, provide alerts if if necessary, if there is an, a sudden elevation is the in the river level, and also to monitor the the history of these variables, especially in these in, in these uh, years in which we have this climate change. So for now, the unit gives energy for its operation, but the idea is to provide energy for the communities that live close to these rivers. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have experimental data for this turbine, but we have some results from uh, very ele uh, ele elemental tests and also the design target of, of the turbine that is about one kilowatt at this specific velocity. So here are some details of how the CFD model is, is designed. Initially, of course, we start with the design provided by the company. We have the span of the blades, the diameter of the turbines. Of course, as you can see here, the, the profile used in the blades, as you can see, is a Gotinga blade, which is design and used for wind energy applications. But since there is no other available data, typically the, I mean, the, the manufacturers of this turbine, they just take the same design that is used in wind energy and just put it into hydrokinetic applications. So there is a still a lot of room in, in order to improve these, these kind of applications. Uh, so what we did is to generate this two-dimensional uh, domain. Uh, of course, we did simulations uh, without the diffuser and with the diffuser, as we can see here, and in this case, uh, since the okay, this the simulation is a dynamic, it, it requires a dynamic mesh. Typically, what is used is uh, the sliding mesh technique, in which, as you can see here, there is the, you can see this ring in which the three blades are located, and this three this ring rotates as as we run the simulations, and there is a communication between the other part of the the stationary parts of the of the computational domain and this rot rotating domain every time step and that communication occurs of course in these uh, in these boundaries that are called interfaces so one of the things that we wanted to to study uh, in this in this uh, in this simulation was the influence of the distance between the two elements of the diffuser in the uh, production of power of the turbine, okay, of mechanical power in the turbine. So the, the distance between these two elements of the diffuser was varied, uh, varied between 1.3 times the diameter of the, of the turbine up to two times the diameter of the turbine. So the next step was to generate the, the hybrid me uh, a mesh. Of course, what we did is uh, typically what, what is done in this kind of application is to generate a hybrid mesh in which we have the structure elements very close to the blade, as we can see here. Uh, this, of course, helps in the correct uh, uh, prediction of the boundary layer of all the elements that I already described uh, that happens in the boundary layer. And in the rest of the domain, uh, what we use is uh, uh, triangles. In this case, this is a two-dimensional case, so it's, it's, it's highly non, non on structure uh, mesh uh, in the rest of the domain, as we can see in these pictures. Uh, so, of course, in every CFD uh, problem uh, or simulation, we have to we have to perform. Uh, 
uh, convergence analysis. This is done, generated a family of meshes. In this case, we what we did was five meshes. And always keeping the Y plus, which is a characteristic length close to the, to the wall between 0 0.5 and 5. This is very important and as, uh, in order to correctly capture and predict the, not only the torque, but also the power of the turbine. And of course, the quality of the mesh was always uh, monitored. As we can see here, the different meshes, the number of elements. So since this is a two-dimensional case, of course, the number of elements doesn't grow that much. So that these techniques can be used in the phase of, in the design phase of these, these devices. We can see here also other uh, details of the simulation. Of course, we use a, a commercial software for this implementation is, uh, we assume incompressible flow, uh, also, of course, uh, for the Reynolds number that is on the order of the 10 to the 5 to 10 to the 6, uh, based on the on the on the turbine on the blade cord, is uh, turbulent. So, so that we need a turbulence model. Uh, there are other details here, as as we can see. Uh, in order to uh, change the tip speed ratio. The inlet velocity is constant, but the angular, angular velocity of the rotation of the turbine is changed in order to, to, to change the tip speed ratio and explore uh, the, the behavior of the turbine in these different uh, operation, uh, operational uh, situations. So once, once we do perform the simulation, as we can see here, uh, we can see the, the, perf the, the change in the torque for, for a complete revolution of the turbine. And we can see that as we increase the number of elements, the, there is a, a clear uh, tendency uh, to just one, one uh, to a convergence of, of, of the solution of the problem. We can also see the average, as you can see, the, 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 the evolution of the, of the, of the torque it uh, depends on time. So what, what we do is just take the average of these of this, uh, plots. And then we can plot here the, this average value with respect to the number of elements. And uh, typically in CFD, what you expect is to get uh, an asymptotic behavior of this curve of the, as the number of elements increases. So once you are in this region, you know that your solution is independent of the number of elements of your mesh. So typically we want to be on this, on this part, okay? Uh, so once this is done just for one uh, tip speed ratio, then what we, what we do is to replicate the simulation for the other tip speed ratio and then construct what is called the performance curve of the turbine. And this is a typical shape of this curve, uh, which means that the, 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 the torque and the, and the power of the turbine is low, at very low TSR, and then increases uh, until a maximum point, and then decreases at higher TSR. This is also related, of course, with all the uh, elements uh, or the behavior of the flow the interaction of the flow with the blades, as I explained earlier, and as we will see later. So for example, for this turbine, we can see that the maximum uh, TSR, uh, the maximum power, as we can see here, is around uh, the CP is the non-dimensional uh, uh, power, which is typically called the power coefficient, is around 0.45. This is also, of course, related with the with the available uh, energy in the in the in the current. So only forty five percent of the available uh, uh, kinetic energy in the in the current of the river can be extracted using this this turbine without a diffuser. Okay, in this case, in this case, all this. So all these numbers are related to the simulation without a future. So we can see that uh, the CP is around 0.45 and, 
and it happens, this maximum happens around uh, one between 1 1.5 and 1.75 deep speed ratio. Okay, so then what we did was to perform the simulation with the diffuser. Uh, initially, as I mentioned before, we changed the size of the, diff of the, of the diffuser. Of course, we had some problems when the size of the diffuser is, 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 is small because uh, as, as I show you the, the generation of these meshes, then the boundary layer mesh for the diffuser interact with the boundary layer or of the of the blades so as as the diffuser gets closer to the turbine it's very difficult to generate these meshes so so the solutions on this uh, when the diffuser is is very small it's not that reliable because the quality of the mesh is not is not that as good as we wanted but as we increase the size of the diffuser or the neck of the diffuser, then we can see a better, a better solution actually achieving a maximum at this at this position, as we can see later. So, so in general, we can see that is there is a there is a there is a clear influence of the size of the diffuser and the and that uh, uh, the, the, the how the 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 diffuser interacts with the turbine and the power that we can extract from the, from the turbine. Of course, as I mentioned, the sliding mesh technique is kind of limited in this case. So other dynamic meshes technique can be used in this kind of simulation. Now, when we compare here in this plot at the at uh, the right, we can see the yellow one is the uh, CP or the power coefficient for the turbine without the diffuser, and the other ones that we see here is the CP of the turbines with the diffuser. Actually, we see that there is a very high increment of this power coefficient. Actually, we see something that is very strange, that this number goes almost to one. That means that, that these devices with the diffuser, the, the, the efficiency could be increasing to 100%, which is not correct. The problem with this, comparison is that the CP is based to the free stream velocity, to the kinetic energy available at the free stream velocity. But we know that in, at the neck of the diffuser, the, ener the velocity, the average velocity of the, <coughs> of, of, the, of the current is higher so that the available a, 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 a kinetic energy of that current is is higher and this CP should be slower. But in general, I think that the diffuser increases, not this high, of course, but increases the 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 the, the efficiency of the turbine. And another interesting thing that, that we see when we use the diffuser is that we can shift the the, the peak performance of the turbine to higher TSR values. And we and actually the the possibilities of of having a wide range of TSR is 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 bigger. So this in general improves the possibility of using this in in rivers that ha, that have uh, uh, big changes of 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 their their flow during during several seasons of the year. So so in general the application of this. A technique of using a diffuser improve uh, in general the performance of the turbine and their and its operation. So when we visualize the wake, what we can see is that without the diffuser, we, we just see a straight wake. Actually, this wake has some uh, dynamics uh, very in the far field. Uh, but when we use the diffuser, of course, what we can see here is the is the high velocity that is induced due to the presence of the diffuser. This is, as you can see here, the velocity here is higher than the free stream, so that the CP should be evaluated with respect to this, let's say, average velocity that is on this, on this part of the, of, the, of the diffuser, not with the free stream. But another interesting thing that we see in these instantaneous uh, pictures is that, the, as you can see, the wake 
in the near field is it's not that wide as when you don't have the diffuser and actually the whole dynamics of the of the wave changes uh, completely actually uh, we can see a, a vortex a, i mean big vortex structure in the wake that we we don't we typically don't see when we don't have the diffuser so in general the energizing the region close to the to the turbine of course improve or uh, have a benefit to the to the performance of the turbine in general here we can see the the vorticity uh, and the visualization of the vorticity in the near field is is very similar as uh, as uh, the, the the elements that we see here are, are kind of similar so these are the two blades as they rotate as you can see here the there is a leading edge separation of a vortices that is convected downstream also we see that the wake of the blades also uh, generates this large uh, part of vorticity in the upper part the dynamics typically is higher because the intensity of this leading edge vortex is higher on the on the lower on this side during this uh, when, when the turbine rotates in this direction of course and here on the left you can see the same turbine of course but with the diffuser so what is different as you can see is that the leading edge separation happens a little bit earlier and actually the direction of the separation is different here is more horizontal here it goes in the direction of the flow so basically this diffuser is inducing a, a general different behavior of the of the of the of the global wake of the turbine and of course the interactions of the wakes of of each blade and of course all these elements are connected to the global performance of the turbine and the improvement of the of the cp of the turbine in this case using this uh, diffuser okay so i will go into the second case in, uh, the second case uh, that we explore is the use of a synthetic jet uh, this uh, this typically this is known as an active flow control device that is used to energize the boundary layer uh, uh, a general representation of this device is, is shown here on the on the right. Basically, it's a cavity, as we can see here, it's a cavity, but one of the walls of the cavity is a diaphragm. This diaphragm and this wall oscillates, and of course, it needs to be energized. Uh, it needs a, a energy, external energy, in, in order to, 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 to perform this oscillation. And as this, uh, uh, wall oscillates it generates it, of course it injects and extract a fluid from the outer flow and in this injection and ejection of flow generates uh, vortices a re typical well, uh, here are shown as ring vortices is if this orifice is a is circular but it's, it's not I mean, it doesn't have a circular it can be a slot but in general you uh, generate uh, some vortices that interact with the external flow of course this uh, in the in the mean in the average situation what is happening is that uh, this device uh, exchange uh, uh, momentum with the external flow so that we can energize the boundary layer so typically these devices are located very close to the surface of the blades that's the idea and the sizes typically are small in this case uh, we used a different hydrokinetic turbine that had been studied by lay and dam but this is similar i mean if if you compare the sizes and the number of blades and the solid the solidity of the turbine that i mentioned in case one is very similar the only difference is the profile in the in the first case uh, we use a gotinga um, a profile in this case we use anaka but again the profiles typically used for, in these turbines are uh, for wind energy applications uh, okay so then uh, so 
again, we construct the, the computational domain. Similar, we, we do that uh, in order to be able to compare these. We, so, of course, we follow the same uh, protocol that we use in case one. In this case, the only difference is that uh, in the surface of the blade, we put this synthetic jet. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a boundary condition that we implement there. We also have to do a performance a convergence analysis of, of this of this problem uh, for the base case, and this is reported in in a, in a paper that I, I will show later. Uh, and the synthetic jet, of course, is is very simplified because it's a simple uh, boundary uh, inlet outlet boundary condition. That means that the the cavity and the diaphragm are not included in the model, and so so that the amount of vorticity that is ejected from this outlet is not exactly the same as it would happen in the reality. But I mean, uh, these, these models are typically used in this kind of simulations, are simplified models, but uh, helps to reduce the computational cost. And of course, what we did was a parametric study in which we changed the location of this, of this uh, uh, synthetic jet outlet. And of, also, we uh, change the amplitude of the velocity with respect to the to the free stream velocity. Uh, of course, we can also change the the, the 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 direction of the jet in order to explore that, and the number of the jets. In we can use uh, you know jets uh, several jets in different positions, but in this case, we just use only one jet. And the other parameter is the excitation frequency. In this case, we explore, uh, uh, I would say, uh, medium, medium, medium uh, frequencies because typically sometimes these jets can be can be can be operated at very low frequency. That's mean in the order order one, or very high frequency up to kilohertz. So that's that depends on the situation, but. In this case, of course, it's related to the velocity of the the, 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 the time scale is related with the velocity of the turbine. So it should be on this on the order of 10. Here are some of the results. First, of course, we explored the different the, the first what we what we found is that the position closer to the to the leading edge was was the better because we have this leading edge separation. But another thing that we that we saw is that there is no influence of there was no big influence of the of the frequency at least in this range of frequency that we explore. And here, these three these three graphs that we have here uh, are related to the actual. Of course, we uh, I forgot to explain we explore uh, synthetic jets in the upper side uh, or extra dose sometimes called estrados upper side and the lower side of the of the blade so we had actually we had uh, one synthetic jet here and another one here but they were not uh, actuated at the same time so what, what we did was to just actuate one and then the other one and the results that we see is that when we actuate the upper side we have this uh, situation that we see here on these these three plots, and when we actuate the lower side, we see these three plots. What we see is this is the tangential force that the blade for one blade. This is the normal force for one blade, and this is the torque for one blade. So as we can see, for example, for the upper side, when when we do the actuation, the effect happens after. Uh, one, 190 degrees, uh, 190 degrees uh, of the rotation of the turbine. So, so we don't see that the upper side rotation makes any effect on the first part of the rotation of the turbine. But when we do the actuation on the lower side, we see more effects in, in azimuthal angles between 90 to 200 degrees. As we can see here in the tangential uh, force, and the torque, of course, the tangential and the and the torque are, are related. And not a big influence in the normal force. This is important because the normal force 
is is going to uh, is related to the to the design to the fatigue design of the turbine. So we don't want this to increase. Uh, uh, we, we don't want this force to increase uh, significantly. So based on this solution that we have here, so the next step what we did was to design a control system. What, what, what was this idea? It's a very, very simple idea. Basically, what we wanted to do is uh, try to uh, switch uh, one synthetic jet or the other, depending on the position of the turbine. So this strategy was based on this, on this, on the results that we saw in on this, on this, uh, on this slide. And what we did was okay. So between zero and ninety degrees, we don't need any any synthetic jet because the the flow is completely attached to the blade. There is no separation. The I mean the, the efficiency is very high on this first on that first part of the of the revolution of the turbine. But then between ninety to to 180 degrees, we turn on the lower side synthetic jet. Then after that, between 180 and 360, we turn off the lower side and turn on the uh, upper side. As we can see here, uh, we can see that the, the main idea of this control is to, to get the better of the, of, of the upper side jet and the lower side jet in, in one revolution of the blade. And, also uh, to minimize the consumption of energy of these synthetic jets. And here we can see the, uh, the, what, what happens in the flow when we use the jets. This is the base case, so no actuation at all. And on the right side, we can see when we have the actuation. What we can see here, if we follow this blade, is that we have uh, the, the flow is attached on the upper side, then we have the formation of the leading edge vortex. The leading edge vortex remain close to the blade and then detach. At the same side, the, the boundary layer on the upper side is very thick on this part of the, of the revolution of the acetabutal angles. So this, there is a big separation of the flow here. So when we use the strategy that I just mentioned, what we can see is that Basically, between zero and ninety, the, the the vorticity and the wake are pretty much the same. Yeah, but between ninety and one hundred and eighty degrees, we see a big reduction of the size of the leading edge vortex, and actually, the leading edge vortex detaches more rapidly than in the case of no actuation, so that the, it goes very rapidly into the wake. We don't we don't see that here, that that this. That this leading edge vortex stays a little bit in the in this near field, so that it interacts highly interacts with the neck, the blade that is it's coming. So that 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 interaction between the blade and the wake that is leaving the the previous blade is reduced with this actuation. We can also see that between 180 and 360 degrees, the 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 separation in the upper side is highly reduced. We can see the flow is highly attached and the, and the wake is, is thinner for the blade. So the actuation on this side for using the upper side uh, synthetic jet helps and improves the efficiency. We can see also the here instantaneous uh, uh, visualization of the flow. We can see the big separation region that is highly reduced here with the actuation at 248 degrees and also at, two, at 270, the, this dynamic stall phenomena is highly reduced because of the, 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 the jets that we have that energize the boundary layer and delay the separation and the size of those vortices. So there is a clear influence of this synthetic jet in the global dynamic stall of, of, the, of the turbine, of the, of the, in the blade of the turbine. So, Another concern was if the energy required by the jets was higher than the energy that we could save, because otherwise this, this, this idea couldn't be possible. So we, we did a, a very simple estimation of the power that, that is required to operate the synthetic jets, which is about 10 watts. And we compare that to the average power produced by the turbine with control that it was uh, 100 and 
at 50 at 56 watt, uh, which is an increase with respect with of the no case of about 150 watts, which is much more more higher than 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 the power required in the in the operating the jet. So that means that this this idea could be actually implement a uh, technology that could be implemented in order to improve this efficiency of these devices. So this, uh, with this, we, I can end uh, this presentation. Uh, so we saw this implementation of, of two-dimensional si simulation for, for vertical axis turbine for hydrokinetic applications. Two cases were, were proposed and shown to explore possibilities to increase efficiency. The first one was using a a diffuser. In this case, we can see that there was an improvement of about 15% uh, in the in the general efficiency of the of the turbine. Uh, we can we also saw that the, the peak performance uh, could be uh, located by changing the size of the of the of the diffuser. In this case, we found that the neck of the diffuser should be approximately 1.8 times the diameter of the turbine. And the, of course, we also saw that the, that the peak CP curve shift it to higher TSR and, and, the, and the range of operation of the turbine is, 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 is wider. So this could be an attractive solution. In the case of, of, of using synthetic jet, we see a very high improvement in the in the including synthetic jets for 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 improving the, the efficiency of the turbine and we implemented a strategy a, a simple strategy to to turn on and off the these uh, uh, these synthetic jets in the lower side and upper side of the of the blade of the turbine in order to uh, manipulate the and delay the the separation of the leading leading edge vortex, and of course, to reduce the dynamic stall phenomena in the turbine. Uh, on a, as I mentioned, on a, on a first estimation of the amount of energy that is required to operate the synthetic jets, it seems like this idea could be, could, could be explored in, in, in a real uh, technological uh, situation. So finally, just to mention that, of course, these two-dimensional simulations uh, avoid a lot of details of the real situation that is happening in the turbine. So right now we are working on developing uh, 3D models based on not only on RANS simulations, but also on hybrid RANS LES simulations to capture the real dynamic situation of the flow. As we can see here, is is highly complex. Is way more complex than just a, a leading edge vortex that is separating. You know? So, so the strategy to take these uh, ideas of improvement into 3D real cases is more difficult than than we what, what we expect. Um, and finally, uh, I have to acknowledge the. Uh, the participation of different uh, colleagues uh, at uh, E-Ray, uh, Professor Santiago Lain at Universidad Autónoma Occidente, and my students, of course, that have collaborated and, and work on, on the development of these uh, models. And of course, the uh, HPC resources here at Universidad de los Andes. Here are some references. And, and with that, if you have any questions, of course, thank you for your attention and your time. Thank you very much, Dr. Omar. That was a very interesting uh, simulation study of vertical axis turbines. We hope that you will sometime in the near future also join us again to present for the 3D simulation results <laughs> and where the new research is going to head. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely, definitely we'll do that. Okay, we have one question from Dr. Thomas von Larcher, my dear colleague. Uh, what is the optimal angle of attack for VATs? I think it, it was, uh, the question was proposed in one of the, uh, introducing a slide, one of the uh, initial yes. slides. Yes, that's, that's a very good question. Actually, one of the, one of the, uh, the first uh, strategies in, in order to, to improve the efficiency of these devices was to use 
uh, a very simple device that was changing the angle of attack of the of the blade as it rotates. So that it was a very simple mechanism that tried to control this angle of attack. Of course, what we want to, I mean, what is expected is that the angle of attack should be as low as possible in order to avoid this dynamic stall phenomena. Okay, so we want low low angle of attacks as much as possible with very low changes of of of, uh, of rapid changes in this in this in in, in, in this uh, in these numbers of of the angle of attack. That's that's what is typically is done. So. So one of the first uh, approximation to this problem was using a very simple mechanism that was changing the the angle of attack of the of the blade as the turbine was rotating. Of course, the the best or the optimal uh, angle of attack depends on the on the tip speed ratio and the tip speed ratio. So so the strategy to control the the any any kind of control that we that we could apply to this turbine depends on also on the TSR. For example, the the, the simulation that I show uh, with the synthetic jets was only done at the at the best point uh, of operation, the maximum point. We haven't explored uh, what, what would happen with this uh, idea at other TSR. Maybe the idea doesn't work. We, we we don't know yet, or we need a different strategy. Okay, fantastic. We have uh, another question from Juan uh, Filejas. What are the future steps of the research in terms of computational modeling? Uh, okay, okay, so regarding this simulation of vertical axis turbine, uh, basically, I mean, what we are exploring right now is, is to take uh, this uh, next step into more realistic simulations. But the computational cost is is very very high. I mean, it can, I mean, as I mentioned before, for example, the the size of the the number of elements in the mesh in a two dimensional simulation is on the order of uh, is on the order of uh, two thousand uh, two hundred thousand two hundred k elements. But for three D, we have to go to Maybe. several millions on the order of 20 to 50 millions and uh, i mean it's, it's it's very very challenging and uh, and it's, it's highly uh, highly expensive because is is uh, there are i mean the we need at least for example 10 rotation of the turbines in order to start uh, performing uh, statistics on those uh, on those sol on that solution so so yeah i mean Right now, is is that is is very challenging, and definitely the next step is to perform, uh, a, perform more realistic uh, simulation. That means three D, with with better uh, turbulence modeling, turbulence models. Okay, fantastic. And uh, if I may uh, propose one question, a little bit off topic, but uh, are there any environmental uh concerns regarding application of these vertical turbines and if so what are these uh, best suited to be utilized in urban areas rural areas uh, if you have if you can have any insight yes. on that that's a very good question actually <laughs> and very interesting yeah actually one of the problems that i know that this company eray that we work that we've been working on is the of course, in these currents of rivers, you have fishes, <laughs> and they can be, you know, they can be. Uh, they, of course, they interact with these turbines, and and is 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 uh, that's uh, that's a big issue. It's, it's similar to what happens with the birds with uh, yeah, wind turbines. Wind turbines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's that's a big problem. Um, there are some ideas in order to to try to improve uh, that, uh, but uh, to use some barriers and try to, you know, uh, make the, the, you know, this, uh, the fish to go on the other side. Another idea is to actually build some sort of a, uh, an structure in order to take the, the current of the river um, on the side of, of the river and, and 
but that means that you have to construct uh, an structural uh, element in the side of the river so that increase the, the 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 cost of of the installation of the turbines uh, so but definitely i mean this this implication of of the interaction with 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 with, with the living uh, 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 marine uh, i mean uh, river uh, fishes is one of the main concerns of these of of these turbines um of course there are there are a lot of uh, work to work to do in on this on this field but gen but in general I, I i mean what what i what i know from from the from some uh, installation of these turbines here in colombia that's that's one of the main issues right now that that need to be addressed mm -hmm. Fantastic. Well, uh, let me go back uh, because as we have no more questions, I will go back uh, to my slide, just share it one last time. So uh, thank you very much again, Dr. Lopez. It was a very interesting thank topic. Uh, thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Wherever you are, if you want to present, uh, use our platform to present your work at a future date, uh, do reach out to us. You see my email address, our team's email address over there. You can re reach out to me directly as well. And if you have any further questions that I'm pretty sure you, you have, you can uh, directly contact Professor Lopez, as you can see his email address on the screen. Uh, so once again, thank you everybody. And uh, I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you everyone.